Hey, how's it going guys? Chris here, and so is Battlefield 1's In the Name of the Tsar DLC. And I have to say, it's a pretty friggin' big DLC. There's loads of new maps and content to sink our teeth into, and of course, a bunch of new weapons to play around with. But just like with the last DLC, and probably the next couple, all of these new guns are locked behind some in-game assignments, which must be completed first in order for them to be equipped and used against the enemy. But some of these challenges are dead easy, and others are a bit of a ball ache, not gonna lie. But anyway, here's what you're going to have to do to get hold of these new Russian DLC weapons and use them as your very own. So starting off with the Assault class, the first weapon you'll find here to unlock is the Model 1900, or as a lot of you might know it as, the Double Barrel Shotgun. It's a pretty fun weapon to use, and it's also fairly easy to get. The factory variant can be a lot by killing 40 people with the M97 trench gun backboard, which shouldn't really be too hard, and you'll also have to get 5 kills with the AT rocket gun in a round. I'd advise sticking to some of the bigger game modes with the longer running times when you're going for the rocket gun kills, as this will give you more time to actually complete the task. You don't need to destroy vehicles of it or anything, and it's probably easier just to use it on players running around. One direct hit with a rocket gun will kill another player instantly, so you can rack up all five of these in no time. Now just like with the factory variant, the slug variant of the Model 1900 will require a bunch of shotgun kills too, but this time with the 12G automatic extended as you'll have to take down 50 players with that. When you're going for those shotgun kills, it's usually best to hop into some of the smaller maps, or the ones that have a lot more close range sightlines and cover. So Amiens and Fort Vaux are some pretty good choices, along with some of the smaller game modes like Team Deathmatch and Domination. You'll also be required to get 20 kills with the Gasser M1870, which can be a very deadly weapon to use if you've got a steady aim. I'd advise hip firing the gasser in close to medium range firefights, and eventually you'll get those 15 kills. Anyway, onto our next assault weapon, the SMG 0818. The first variant is the Factory, and this requires you to get yourself 15 kills of the MP18 Trench, which can essentially be done in one round fairly easily. You'll also need to get yourself 10 kills of the anti tank grenade, which, despite being designed for blowing up tanks, can also be pretty effective against infantry too. Using the anti-tank grenade out in the open is usually going to be a bit of a waste, as the longer fuse time is going to give your enemies a chance to get out of the way of that blast radius. But when there's a big group of players all huddled together in a trench, small room, narrow corridor, or at a congested objective point, then it's going to be a lot harder for them to escape that explosion, and a lot easier for you to get the kills needed for the challenge. As for the SMG 0818 Optical variant, you'll need to get 50 kills of the Automatico M1918 Trench, so just run around, hip fire, and generally cause some havoc on some of those smaller maps and game modes. Should be another easy one for you. A few rounds on Argon Forest should do the trick for this one. Along with the Automatico Trench kills, you'll also need to get 5 kills of the Anti Tank Mine, which will probably take a bit more patience, though it's still not quite as painful as getting those 25 mine kills needed to unlock the Hell Eagle Defensive. Because you can kill a few people at a time by blowing up tanks with mines, this one probably won't take as long as you'd expect. Just place the mines at entrance points to objectives, sneak behind an unaware tank and throw down the mines under its tracks to get yourself a sneaky takedown. Or you can always be that guy and just plant a few mines at the enemy spawn, if you really must. Moving over to the medic weapons now, with the first being the Fedorov Optimat and its trench variant. To get this one, you'll be required to kill 40 players with the Seri Gotti Trench, and you'll also need to perform 40 squad heals. The Seri Gotti Kills task is pretty straightforward, and all you really need to do to get those squad heals quickly is just follow your squad mates and throw med packs at them whenever they take damage. The med pack is generally more effective to use than the crate, as the squad members don't actually need to stand by it in order to gain health back, and this should allow you to heal them over time whilst they're on the move. To unlock the Fedorov Avtomat Optical, all you need to do here is net yourself another 50 kills with the Selbstlader M1916 Optical variant, which should be pretty easy to do on some of the new open maps like Galicia and Volga River, and you'll also need to take down 20 players with the C96 pistol. If you're having trouble getting those pistol kills, just land two shots on target with your Selbstlader M1916, and then simply follow them up with another shot or two with the C96, and this should be enough to put down another player at those longer distances. As for unlocking the General Lou Rifle, the Factory variant requires you to get 40 Mondragon Storm kills, and 30 Squad Revives too. So just like with the 40 Squad heals to get the Fedorov, you'll also need to stay close to your squad buddies and just bring them back from the dead whenever they get taken down. 
I'd advise avoiding getting into a squad with loads of snipers in it, and instead pick one with a few assault and support players, as they'll be the ones more likely to rush up to the objective, and of course, get themselves killed. Small game modes like Team Deathmatch can often be more hectic, and allow you to get more revives in the process, with those spawning times being quicker. So if you really want to get this one done and dusted quickly, then TDM is probably the way to go. The General Lou Storm variant can be gained by getting 50 kills with the auto-loading 8.35 Marksman, and 30 kills with the Rifle Grenade FRG. Just like getting the anti-tank kills for the 0818, the Rifle Grenades are best used against players in enclosed environments with little room to escape, so trenches and small rooms. Fort Vaux is a great map to get these kills on, along with Amiens for its narrow alleyways, corridors and buildings. So if it's taken a while to get those grenade kills, I'd advise jumping onto those maps and just fire grenades into areas full of enemies and rooms with people inside. So with the medic weapons out of the way, let's talk about those support guns. The first one we can find here is the Parabellum MG1417, and more specifically, the low weight variant for that gun. Instead of having to get so many kills of a specific primary weapon, you'll instead have to destroy two planes with any LMG. This is one of the trickier assignments in the whole of the DLC, though do take into account that you don't actually need to get a kill in order to destroy the plane, so if the other player jumps out when the plane is low on health, keep shooting at it anyway, as you can still temporarily destroy the plane after the pilot has bailed out. Tips for completing this one would be to pick a map with lots of aerial combat like Monty Grappa, make use of the bipod to stay on target, and avoid staying prone for very long in the middle of the open, as you'll be easy pickings for a sniper. The MG15 NA is a pretty good weapon choice to use against planes, especially the suppressive variant with its massive ammo capacity, though you might also want to unlock the other Parabellum variant first and use that instead, which also takes down planes pretty well too, with its large mag size and rapid fire rate. If you struggle to hit those small planes, then go for the bombers, as although they can withstand more damage, they're a lot slower and easier to hit, plus they're also less likely to spin around and shoot back. With patience, you'll get this one eventually just keep shooting at those planes. Other than that though, you'll also need to get 20 mortar airburst kills, which can be done quite easily on 64 player operations, or maps like Argon Forest, and areas with lots of trenches like the beginning of St. Quentin's Scar. To unlock the MG1417 suppressive variant, you'll be glad to know that this one's a bit easier to do, hence why you might want to go for this one first, and then use it to take down the planes for the low weight variant. All you've got to do is kill 40 players with the Lewis gun low weight, and get 50 vehicle repairs. It doesn't have to be a tank manned by a squad member or anything, just any vehicle on your team. And because you can often spawn on allied tanks, just do that with your wrench equipped, and follow those tanks around. Whenever it takes damage, patch it up, and you'll receive a vehicle repair every couple of seconds whilst you do so. Piece of cake. The second LMG to unlock in the DLC is the Perino 1908. Its low weight variant can be a lot by racking up 40 kills with the MG15 NA low weight, a pretty bog standard task, and you'll also have to get 10 squad resupplies in a round, which is very easy to do. Just keep following your squad mates around and keep chucking those ammo pouches at them as they go about their business. This will need to be done within a round, so it's best to just keep supplying them with ammo until you complete the assignment, and when you eventually do so, the Perino low weight will be all yours. The defensive variant is all about the kills, as you'll be required to get 50 kills of the Browning Rifle Storm variant, fairly easy to do at those closer to medium ranges, along with 20 kills of the Repeater Pistol M1912. The M1912 is a surprisingly effective weapon when hit fired, and if you're pretty good at the game, you can always just run around on a close quarters map and just accumulate the kills one at a time. Though if you're finding it tough to use it on its own, just keep swapping over to the pistol and use it to finish off a target weakened by your primary gun. So this takes us over to the scout weapons, and if you thought the Parabellum was a bit tricky to get, wait till you see what you have to do to unlock the new scout rifles. The infantry variant of the Mosin Nagant M91 is fairly straightforward to get, as all you'll need to do is land three headshots within a round with the SMLE Mark III infantry, which can be done more easily on operations and other big game modes which have longer match times. Along with that, you'll also need to take down 20 players with the Mars Automatic. Now, because you're played as a scout, and because the Mars is a very deadly gun that packs a pretty mean punch, you can just run around with a rifle, such as the Gewehr M95, land one hit with your primary, and then follow it up with one shot from the Mars, which will often be enough to get you the kill. As for the Mosin's Marksman variant, unfortunately, this is the one that's likely going to piss you off the most. 
Getting 50 kills of the Gewehr 98 Marksman is the first challenge to complete, which is fairly simple and straightforward. But along with this, you'll also have to get 15 kills of the Tripwire Bomb HE, which sounds easy, but is actually a massive pain in the arse. Because the Tripwire HE is designed to deal a heavy but not lethal amount of damage all in one go, this means that it's all down to luck as to whether the enemy that runs into it has already taken damage in order for the Tripwire to kill especially with everyone having the new flak specialisation selected by default, which makes this task even harder, as it reduces the damage taken from explosives. Other than boosting this one with a buddy, you're just going to have to grind this challenge and hope for the best. Though some tips that I can give to you, which might help you out, will be to play on TDM and Domination, and plant trip wires in otherwise safe places, which enemy players are likely to rush into to regain lost health back. Places like under stairways, in buildings at the top of stairs, in rooms hidden away from open sight lines, and just at general doorways, entrances, and along travel routes that get quite busy. Putting trip wires around objective points in operations is also a pretty good bet, though it might not be as effective due to people spamming grenades at the objectives, which will more often than not destroy a little trap. You could always try and lure a weakened enemy into a planted trip wire by shooting them with your pistol and then running into a room where the trip wire is active. But apart from all this, you're just going to have to grind away and grit your teeth if you're going for the Marksman variant. The second scout rifle is the Vitelli Vitali M1870-87, which also has two variants and a very long name. The infantry variant can be gained by killing 15 people with the M1903 Experimental, which can be done pretty easily in a TDM game or two. And along with this, you'll just need to perform 20 periscope spot assists. Another easy one, which can be completed in no time at all in a big 64 player operation match. Just spot those targets from the safety of cover, and let your teammates do the rest. To unlock the carbine variant of the Vitelli, you'll just have to get 50 kills of the SMLE Mark III carbine, which will be easy enough to do. But you'll also have to destroy a vehicle with a K-Bullet, which is another one of those assignments that's unfortunately going to get in a lot of people's way. The bullet doesn't have to kill an enemy, but it does need to destroy their vehicle, and because K-Bullets only deal a very small amount of damage, along with the fact that you only have about 5 of them upon spawning, means that this challenge can be a very hard one to accomplish. One way to go about it is by assisting teammates who are already working on taking out a vehicle. If you notice a tank is low on health and is retreating to a safe spot to repair, try and get into a position to deal damage with the K-Bullets, as the bullets are going to prevent the vehicle from repairing, and other than by taking you out, there's really not much a tank driver can do to avoid your attacks, with them moving around so slowly. Though do take into account that K-Bullets can ricochet, if they land at a bit of an angle on the tank that you're firing at. If you stood next to an ammo crate, then you'll be able to regain those lost K-Bullets back to continue dealing damage too, which just might be enough to finish a vehicle off. Shooting light planes, artillery trucks and transport vehicles is also a good way to get this one, as they'll be easier to take out being a bit weaker, and if you've got a buddy who also wants to complete this challenge, you could always both work together to take down a light plane, either both using K-Bullets, or where one person disables a plane using the AA gun, allowing the other player to provide the killing blow and destroy it with their K-Bullets. Other than these tips though, just keep shooting at weakened vehicles, and eventually, you should manage to complete this task. Bit of a pain to do, but it's not impossible. So that's how you get hold of all the new primary weapons for the main classes. But that's not all, as there's also a couple of secondary weapons here too, such as the Nagant Revolver. This can be a lot by getting 20 kills of the PO8 Luger Pistol, so you could just run around and use the PO8 for a bit to get these kills, or just use it to follow up from a sniper shot in close to medium ranges. This is pretty much the same story to unlock the Obrez Pistol too, as you'll just have to kill 5 players in a round with the Emily 1903. You might want to hop into a big game mode with a longer run time to complete this one, but otherwise you could always use the pistol as a finishing off tool, which will count towards the task, or just run around with the pistol and get the kills the obvious way. The choice is yours. Now the last weapon in the DLC to unlock is the C93 carbine, which is another gun that's sort of been forgotten about because it's a tanker pilot weapon. This can be a lot by getting 40 kills with the FT-17 light tank, and it should be fairly easy to get by just playing carefully with the light tank and racking up the kills. If you fancy adding another weapon to your collection, then this one shouldn't really take up too much of your time. So there we have it guys, that's pretty much everything. Of course, you've also got the new melee weapons in there too, but as far as the main guns go, these are all the new assignments to unlock them. I'm going to be doing a bunch of new weapon guides on these guns very soon, so make sure you stick around and subscribe if you want to see them, and of course, hit that like button if this guide helped you out. 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.